Hey folks, got some really exciting stuff for you if you have an AJ126 3 liter supercharged Jag engine. I know everyone with the 3 liters probably been watching our feeds and seeing all the 2300 stuff we've been doing with the Harrop superchargers and how much power we're able to get out of the V8s. And we've had a lot of people asking whether we're going to fit a larger supercharger to the V6. Unfortunately, if that's what you're looking for, that's not what this video is about. Um, one of the questions that people asked about that is, if we develop it, how much would it make? What would it cost? There is, we feel, a price point at which it doesn't make sense to do this on the V6, and here's why. The V6 engine fundamentally is the same as the V8. The rear two bores on the block are just not punched out. It has a shorter blower fitted to it, but dimensionally it's the same. It runs the same fuel system, uh, you know, same low pressure, high pressure fuel pumps, and it also uh, runs the same ECU. So to V8 swap, any of the V6 equipped JLR engines is a relatively straightforward thing to do. And you combine that with the fact that there are V8 versions of them. So there's some level at which it doesn't make sense to try and, for example, fit a much larger supercharger onto a V6 F-Type if you can just buy a V8 version of it. Pretty much the only thing that JLR didn't put the V8 into in practical terms is really these, it's the XE. Yes, they did technically put it into the Project 8, but that's a $250,000 wide body car. It's not really a normal version of it that's attainable for most people. Uh, I've even seen some people comment that you can't put the V8 in these. Our dealer in Kiev has done it, we've tuned it. It's, it's eminently doable. But that's kind of the head room that you have in terms of price comparison to where it doesn't necessarily make sense to spend 10, 15, 20,000 dollars, something like that, getting a much bigger supercharger onto a V6 when you could potentially get a dropout engine or just sell your V6 version of your vehicle and buy the V8 version. That doesn't mean that there's not more to gain. And this is where uh, we went with these and something interesting that we would wondered about for a while. Um, and that's porting the supercharger. A lot of questions about that. We had a lot of questions about it too. Um, what we have done, what we're happy to announce is that we have partnered with Jokers, uh, very well known for their porting services, um, in an exclusive agreement with each other to provide their ported superchargers with our calibrations for these engines. So we started out um, with our existing platform XE where we've done all the testing on pump fuel, on ethanol, as a baseline to be able to compare it to the ported supercharger. When we put the ported supercharger on the vehicle with no other alterations, we did see a moderate amount of gain, um, something in the region of 10 to 15 horsepower, depending on what runs that we're looking at. But with some additional tuning um, to change some of the, the inbuilt limits that the ECU has for certain parameters, we're actually able to get, get some huge gains out of them. So, what are the facts and figures? Pump, 98 RON or 9394 AKI if you're in North America. We were able to achieve 558 horsepower with the ported supercharger and our tuning applied to it. So that's a vehicle that's already got upper and lower pulley and ECU tuning. E85 will take you to 593 horsepower. Again, that's at the crank. And we have one more little bit of secret sauce that we added into this. We'll show you a little up close on this, and that's our carbon fiber intake system. So this Y-pipe fits all of the three liter and five liter supercharged JLR engines. We are not running water methanol injection on this engine. We've just put the intake on it, and you probably noticed something a little different here as well, and that's we upsize the mass airflow to the size that comes on the F-Pace SVR. Um, all of the V8 cars have a larger math tube, so this does start to become a restriction as does the intake at certain power levels. So 340 horsepower stock XE, probably not gonna see a whole bunch out of the intake, but when we're trying to get over 600, it does make a difference. That's what we found by adding the intake onto this. We've been able to push the horsepower to 612 at the crank. So that's stage four E85, uh, upper and lower pulley, ported supercharger, and the intake with the five liter. So, the 600 horsepower barrier has been broken. 
Uh, we will be taking this down to the strip to run sometimes in uh, the real world and show people what it'll do in the quarter mile. Um, but this package is now available from us uh, in partnership with Jokers. If you want to come have a closer look at this, we'll talk a little bit about what porting is as well. Um, I know a lot of you know what it is, but some people have asked the question too, like when people talk about porting, what exactly do they mean? So what we're actually looking at here is a 1900 housing and snout. Um, this is what comes on the five liter cars stock, just what we happen to have here to show you. Um, this is the housing, so the rotors sit inside here. And this is the aperture where, uh, where the air is drawn from the supercharger into the intake and um, actually comes up and is pushed back down the lid through the uh, heat exchangers and into the intake. And this is the snout, so this would fit on the opposite end of it here. You'll see that the snout has a provision for mounting the throttle body onto it. So this is how the air comes into the supercharger. It's actually that way around into the supercharger through here, through this shaped opening, into the screws, and then gets pushed out the top. If you have a look inside this, you'll see that this is actually a cast piece. The same is true of the housing. So there are some imperfections inside these from the casting process. Um, why would the manufacturer leave power and airflow on the table? That's a question that people will have, right? How, how is it that this is able to be improved upon? Every single thing on a car is made to a price point and with manufacturing limitations. So whereas the casting of this and the amount of machining that's required to make this functional on the vehicle, um, it works in that process. It achieves the targets that the OEM has set out for this. There's still things that can be done to it to open out certain areas of the um, casting, to remove some of the imperfections, and to um, improve the airflow without the limitations of the stock manufacturing process. So it just may not be cost effective at all for an OEM to go to this extent. Um, there are also some negative consequences for some people to taking this material out. So manufacturers talk about something called NVH which means noise, vibration, and harshness. Essentially, how smooth is this? Um, how comfortable is it to drive? Now, us crazies who have things that we want to modify, we love to hear the supercharger whine. But if this supercharger, for example, was fitted to a brand new full-size Range Rover long wheelbase with the chauffeur package, that person does not want to hear the supercharger. So there's pros and cons to it. For some of us, taking material out of it, spending the money to improve the airflow, hearing more supercharger wine because that removal of material doesn't dampen the sound as much is a great thing. But the manufacturer might look at that and say, ah, we can't have this supercharger making this much noise. And it isn't financially viable for us to CNC machine the inside of these parts to this extent. So Jokers has done a lot of complicated analysis um, on these parts. There's some interesting stuff that happens with the rotor timing and the pressure waves. Spoke to Brad at Jokers about this at length and my head started to spin. Um, but the proof is in the pudding. Uh, we've experimented ourselves with porting a little bit and seen some gains doing some hand porting, but we were really pleasantly surprised uh, how well this performed once we were able to get in there and, and make the tuning adjustments that we needed to. So the long and the short of it is V6 guys, V6 gals, we have got 600 horsepower packages available for you now that you can run on E85. We're over the 550 mark on pump fuel. Um, really excited to put some more of these out into the market. And if you're at the point where your supercharger needs rebuilding anyway, the additional cost to port this uh, isn't significant compared to the cost of rebuilding it. So this is a great opportunity if you're at that stage, port it, rebuild it, get it back on the car, if you're buying this from us, it comes with the next stage file that you need for the calibration, so you don't have to purchase any additional tuning software. And then we have the intakes that are in production now too. So more supercharger wine, tons of power. We're over the 600 horsepower mark, and we want to take a bunch of you guys with.